This is the story of how a grown woman disguised as a nine-year-old cons her way to America by pretending to be the long-lost daughter of a couple. But Esther is a seasoned killer and the family has no idea they have welcomed a murderer into their family. Let's see what happens. Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we will be going through the 2022 movie Orphan First Kill. It's time to recall. Let's get started, turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. The movie begins when we follow a young woman as she drives up a snowy landscape in Estonia to arrive at a mental institute. When she is admitted inside, we see there is a guard in the security room monitoring the security cameras and a mentally ill patient who is on mop duty. Apart from this is the door guard. She tries to make light of the situation but nobody responds. Finally, the warden comes to greet her. He then begins to brief her about her duties as an art therapist. Then a guard comes running up to them and informs the warden that Lena has escaped. Anna, the young woman, asks about Lena and he responds that she is their most violent patient. He locks her inside a classroom and instructs her not to leave. As Anna takes in her surroundings, she notices a little girl sitting behind one of the desks. When she walks up closer, she sees that the girl has done a quick sketch of Anna. Impressed, she asks the girl her name and the girl replies that it is Lena. Confused yet scared by the girl's unsettling presence, Anna begins to back off when the warden arrives with some guests. They carefully approach Lena and she lets them escort her away. Anna then confronts the warden about why he didn't tell her that Lena was a little girl to which he responds that she is not. He responds that Lena is a 31-year-old woman but with a gland disorder which causes her to appear like a 9-year-old. Lena was committed to the same institute due to murder charges and is known to be extremely manipulative and violent. The warden cautions Anna to be very careful around her as her predecessor had underestimated Lena and suffered the consequences. Some days later we see the guard in the security room as he watches Lena in her room. After making sure that the coast is clear he goes to her room, a curiously beguiled expression on his face. He offers her some ribbons through the flap for her to tie around her neck and wrist to hide the scars, but Lena seduces him into unlocking the door and coming inside to help her. She slams the guard's head repeatedly against the wall, killing him. She is successful in making her way to the door, but runs into the guard there. As he advances towards her, she uses a word to trigger the patient on mop duty and she flies at the guard in a rage, killing him. Outside, Anna is about to get into her car to leave when she sees Lena there. She immediately runs inside the institute to warn security, but by the time everyone is alerted, no one can find any trace of her. When Anna leaves, she tells the warden that this job is not for her. When she gets home, we see that Lena hid in her trunk and finally kills the woman. Lena makes herself at home, playing the piano and drinking wine. She uses Anna's computer to search for the missing girls in America and finds what she was looking for, a girl who bears a resemblance to her. She uses the clothes and ribbons given to her by the unfortunate guard to disguise herself as a nine-year-old. On her way out, she notices Anna is still alive and puts the poor woman out of her misery. Afterwards, she makes sure she is found by a police officer as she sits on a swing in a park. When he asks her who she is, she tells him that her name is Esther and that her parents are in America and so she is taken to Moscow as the authorities contact the Albrights, Esther's parents. In America, we meet the Albrights. Alan is an artist who is still devastated about his missing daughter. Trisha is a philanthropist who tries her best to keep her remaining family close. Their son Gunnar is a teenager who is a fencing champion. When they get to know that Esther is alive, Trisha gets on a plane headed for Russia and there, at the US Embassy, she is reunited with her daughter. While on a plane, Trisha catches Esther up on all that she has missed. Esther says that she can't wait to see Granny, but Trisha says Granny died years ago and Esther should remember this. Esther, angry at her mistake, steals a bottle of alcohol and drinks it in the bathroom while having a sort of fit of rage. When they land, Trisha looks over Esther's dress, which is a little austere, and removes the hat she wears. There is an emotional reunion and they eventually make their way home. Once there, Esther is shown into the big house and her room which was left as the real Esther would have left it four years ago. It is very pink, full of vintage looking dolls and complete with a child sized pink record player. Trisha asks her to let them know if she wants anything as they have a lot of Christmases and birthdays to make up for. Esther replies that she likes painting, surprising Alan who says that she was never interested before. Trisha suggests that they can spend some time in Alan's studio then. 
Before they leave, Trisha tells Esther that tomorrow they'll be going to see Dr. Seeger, the one who had a parrot named Sydney, and Esther nods, as if remembering. The next day, Trisha and Esther go to their family therapist, Dr. Seeger, and Esther is nervous. She goes in and the doctor says that she is very happy to see her. She tells Esther that as she told her when she first came here, they can stop if any question makes her feel uncomfortable. Esther replies that she wishes her parents were like that because they keep asking her questions that she does not want to answer. Dr. Seeger says that's okay and asks her if there's anything Esther feels like telling her, but Esther suddenly starts talking to the parrot. Later, the doctor calls in Trisha and Esther spills a drink on the doctor's assistant and sneaks into the office to eavesdrop. Trisha is talking about how changed Esther is, along with the accent, and the doctor tells her that this is all natural considering what the kid has been through. She then says that Esther seems emotionally stable, but there were some inconsistencies, such as Esther referring to her current parent as Sydney, who was a red macaw and a lot bigger. Esther is annoyed at this and creates a scene by blaming another kid in the waiting room for having pushed and ripped her dress. As they leave, Esther notices a man taking pictures of them. As they get home, Alan asks her if she'd like to join him in his studio, and she says that she would love to. Alan's studio is very big and an artist's dream, leaving Esther awed. She admires Alan's paintings and asks him what the lights are for. He turns them on, asking her how she doesn't remember what her daddy is famous for, and shows her the hidden paint which lights up under the lights, giving the paintings a new dimension. Esther is fascinated. He asks her what she'd like to do, and she draws a charcoal sketch of him, which moves him immensely. Watching all this through the window is Trisha. Later, we see Esther binding her chest with cloth in the bathroom when Trisha comes into her room and picks up the Bible Esther brought with her. This angers Esther, who later begins to find a place to hide it. Eventually, she discovers a hiding place in the dollhouse and actually comes across the real Esther's diary. She reads through it and picks up that Esther had used to call Trisha mummy. Later at dinner, Alan gushes about Esther's talent as Gunner says it's impressive how four years ago she was drawing stick figures and now she's suddenly a pro. Then Esther drops the mummy bomb, catching Trisha off guard. Mid-dinner, a police detective arrives who was on Esther's case when she went missing. Esther is uncomfortable around him as she overhears him talking about how crucial it is to get the full story from Esther. That night, we see Esther packing up her bag in preparation to leave. She knows she's gotten herself too deep into this mess and she needs to get out. We see that she's stolen some jewelry from Trisha and kept it in her bag as well. While leaving, she notices a small rat in her room's vent. Outside, as she walks away from the house, she turns around to see Alan painting in his studio and is conflicted, having fallen for the guy who thinks she is his nine-year-old daughter and finally turns back. The next day, Trisha has a charity gala and Alan surprises her by dressing up and agreeing to go as her date because usually he detests such events. They begin to make out, but before things can progress, Esther sees them and in a fit of jealousy, rips the dress Trisha was going to wear. Trisha and Alan break apart from the noise, and Trisha is devastated to see her dress ruined. They get ready and leave Gunner in charge of looking after his sister. After his parents leave, Gunner invites his friends over to drink and smoke weed and rants about how weird his sister is. Esther comes out too, but he tells her to go back inside. Meanwhile, Inspector Donnan arrives and, in the guise of using the bathroom, sneaks up to Esther's room and takes a record. Esther comes in after he leaves and figures out what he was after. She turns on the shower in her bathroom and goes after him. Trisha and Alan return home after some time, and Trisha goes up to see Esther. She hears the shower and then notices the Bible lying on a shelf, which Esther forgot to hide in her haste to go after the inspector. Trisha looks through it and finds pictures of men inside. There is also a picture of her and Alan with her face crossed out. Disturbed, Trisha keeps looking and finds a clipping of Inspector Donnan with his address written on top. She finally reads the name of the Sarn Institute at the back of the Bible and goes into the bathroom to confront Esther but finds it empty. On the other hand, Donnan is back home and makes a drink for himself. He takes fingerprints off of the record player and matches them to the real Esther's fingerprints. They do not match. Just then, Esther stabs him from behind multiple times and wonders how he found out her secret. She says that even her own mother doesn't know, but the man replies that she does. Trisha then turns up and shoots the inspector dead to Esther's surprise. She then turns the gun on Esther and demands the truth. Esther tells her everything and Trisha is shocked, but Trisha has something more shocking to reveal. She asks Esther why she hasn't just robbed them blind and left, 
wondering if she's planning on pulling off a bigger con. But Esther says that if she just lets her go, Trisha will never hear from her again. But Trisha says that this is exactly what she is afraid of. They cannot have Esther disappearing twice. Esther figures out that the real Esther never went missing. Trisha reveals that Gunner had always been too rough with his sister and one night, he went too far. There was nothing that she could do for her daughter but cover it up and make it look like she went missing. She says that a mother protects her own and could not give up her only remaining child to the authorities for some minor sibling crap. Trisha tells Esther that Alan changed when Esther went missing, but her return made him a happy man again, and she wants to make sure it stays that way. She says that Esther conned her way into their family, she chose this role, and now she is going to play it to carry out a mutually beneficial arrangement. Together, they hide Donner's body in a cellar hatch where the real Esther is also buried, and Trisha covers up Donner's disappearance by writing an email from him that he is on vacation. The next day, they have a family meeting with the psychiatrist, and Esther and Trisha work together to make sure the meeting is a success. Trisha then gets new clothes for her, putting Esther in pretty pink clothes to make everyone believe that Esther is a happy young lady. And Esther charms everyone by playing the piano and acting like the sweetest creature ever. That night, Gunner comes to threaten her, saying that he has no qualms about killing her if she crosses any lines. Although the idea was Trisha's, she is not happy about how close Esther is getting to Alan, even though Alan himself can't suspect Esther's true intentions. A rivalry has begun, and that night, Trisha puts poison in Esther's food, but Esther executes herself from the table and goes to her room. Alan brings up her plate and comforts her, and after he leaves, she feeds the food to the rat in her room. She joins Alan in his studio and they paint together. After he leaves, Trisha comes to tell Esther that she is delusional if she thinks she can ever have her husband. Esther is hurt and distraught, but when she finds the rat in her room dead, she becomes enraged. The next morning, Esther cooks breakfast for everyone and a special green smoothie for Trisha with the dead rat in it. Alan has to go out of town for work, but Trisha makes it so that Esther can't go with him. At the station, Esther tries to kill Trisha and Gunner, but is interrupted. Once Alan leaves, Trisha shows her full wrath towards Esther, and Esther makes a failed attempt to run away by stealing Trisha's car. She is brought back home later that night as Trisha and her son plan to kill her once and for all. Trisha tries to make it look like suicide, but their plan is interrupted when Alan calls to say he's heard about Esther running away and is on his way back. Esther, however, manages to run and hide and eventually kills Gunner with his crossbow and delivers the killing blow with his fencing sword. Trisha finds them and flies in a rage at Esther as the two of them begin to fight, setting the house on fire in the process. Alan returns home to find his home alight and Trisha and Esther on the roof. Trisha and Esther both slip and end up clinging to the roof, begging Alan to save them, with Esther claiming that Trisha attacked her and Trisha trying to reveal the truth about Esther. Trisha falls to her death and Alan lifts Esther to the roof. As he comforts her, Esther's fake teeth come loose. Horrified, Alan calls her a monster before he too falls to his death. Esther walks out of the house, pretending to be innocent as she is taken away to an orphanage to be adopted, and this is where the movie ends. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.